we create a subscription. Now, after we create our subscription in here, now we're going to need to fund it. So you already know, we're going to go to our interactions and we're going to create a new contract called fund subscription contract fund subscription is script like this. And we're going to leave it all in this interactions.so. So we should first pick an amount. I know that the amount has to be a uint 96, but we'll say public constant fund amount equals, we'll say three ether. We'll just do three. And now we'll create our function run, which will be external. And in here, we're just going to call fund subscription using config like this. We're going to create a new function above it called function fund. Actually, just going to copy paste here. And this will be a public function. And here we're going to do something very similar to what we did up here. But in order for us to fund the subscription, we're going to need our subscription ID that we want to fund. We're going to need the VRF coordinator v2 address. And then we're also going to need the link address, which we haven't actually talked about yet. So I'm actually going to copy this bit up here. We're going to copy this, paste it here. So we're going to need the VRF coordinator address. We're also going to need the uint64 sub ID, right? Because this is the subscription that we're actually funding. Oh, sorry, the sub ID is way down here. My bad. We're also going to need the link token because it's the link token that is the contract that we're actually making the call on. Now in our helper config, we don't have a link token, right? So we're going to need to add a link token to these. For Sepolia, the link token already exists. So we would just add like a comma here and just add the link token address which again, we can get, we go to the docs, let's go to getting started, link token contracts, let's copy the Sepolia token here, or just click it and then copy it, paste it in here, and we'll call this link like this, which means up on our network config, we're gonna to have to do address link. And now for Anvil, we're gonna to have to do what? That's right, we're gonna to have to deploy a mock link token. So. I made your life a little bit easier for this. Instead of having to deal with the Chainlink contracts versions and the different links tokens and stuff, I just rewrote the link contract for a newer version of Solidity. So if you want to just come to my Foundry Smart Contract Lottery F23, go to test mocks link token dot sol. You can actually just copy paste this whole thing. So back in our VS code, we're going to go to test new folder mocks, new file link token that's all and paste that in there. Now we did one other thing at the top, we imported this soulmate package. Soulmate is a gas opinionated building blocks for building smart contracts, right? So it's a way to very easily create different types of common smart contracts very easily. So this link token that we created, I based off of this soulmate package. So we're gonna have to import this soulmate package. And again, if this isn't making sense, this token stuff doesn't make sense. Don't worry, we're going to explain all this token stuff in the next section. But let's do forge install and we'll do transmissions 11 slash soulmate transmissions 11 slash soulmate like this. Another really popular another really popular library is going to be this open Zeppelin slash contracts library. And we're going to use this a lot very soon, but we're going to use soulmate for this one. So forge and forge install and then dash no commit. All right, great. And since we installed this new library, we're going to have to go to our boundary.toml, do a little comma here, and we're going to say at soulmate equal, oops, soulmate equals lib slash soulmate slash src. Like this. I even want to toggle the word wrap. Okay, cool. Now this looks good. Now in our helper config, we can now use that link token. So we can say import link token from dot dot slash dot dot slash test slash where is that too many oh excuse me slash test slash mocks slash link token dot soul and now down here in our anvil we can do link token link equals new link token because there's no constructor parameters and then we can finally say down here link is address link so now we have a link address and so we'll need to do a little comma here, address link. And now anytime we call this get helper config, we're going to just need to add another comma here. 
perfect. That looks good. That looks good down here. Just for a sanity check, we're gonna do a forge build. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Looks like I did miss some stuff. Aha, in the deploy, we need a new comma. Let's say address link here. In the test, we need a new comma as well. We'll scroll up, we'll say address link. Let me scroll down. We'll say link here. So it looks like I got it everywhere. Let's do forge build again though, just to make sure. Cool. It's mornings, that's fine. Everything is compiling. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so let's go back. So our helper config has now been updated to deploy a mock link. And if we're on a live network, we're using the actual link token or for Sepolia, the link testnet token. So if we go back to our interactions, we now have this link contract. Well, this link address, and we are going to work with the link contract in a second. What we can do now is we can create a new function just called fund subscription that takes the BRF coordinator, the sub ID and the link and actually does the funding. So we'll create one more we'll do function fund subscription address VRF coordinator V2 or VRF coordinator uint 64 sub ID address link. And we'll make this public. And here we're going to run the same functions that the front end would do to fund the subscription. So I want to, I want to do some print statements though. I want to do a console.log funding subscription. I'm a sub ID console.log using VRF coordinator. I'm a VRF coordinator console.log on chain ID on block chain ID. And now this is where, unfortunately we have to do some wonky stuff. If this part doesn't make sense either, don't worry. And I know I've been saying that a lot for this lesson, but it's really okay. We're going to power through this. The VRF coordinator mock actually works with the link token transfers a little bit differently than the actual contract. So we're going to say if block dot chain ID equals three, one, three, three, seven. So if we're on a local chain, this means that we have a mock deployed. We're going to do something else. We're going to call, we're going to do VR VM dot start broadcast. VM dot stop broadcast. So if we're on Anvil, we're going to say VRF coordinator v2 mock. And if we go to the VRF coordinator to mock, there's actually a fun subscription. There's actually a fun subscription button or a fun subscription function on the actual contract. This doesn't exist. We have to do a transfer and call thing, but we're going to do VRF coordinator v2 mock VRF coordinator fund subscription sub ID and the fund amount be able to stop broadcast else. We're actually going to do the real transfer here. We're going to say VM dot start broadcast VM dot stop broadcast link token. So we need the actual link token here. We're going to import link token from test slash mocks slash link token dot so link token at address link dot transfer and call VRF coordinator fund amount and then ABI dot encode sub ID for now. Don't worry about what this is doing. We can come back much later once we explain ABI encoding and this section for now, literally just feel free to blindly follow along. So we're going to do this transfer and call to fund our subscription Great. Let's do a forge build and all right, cool. Contracts are indeed compiling. Fantastic. And you know, what? I'm actually going to run this fun subscription script right now to show you it in action, right? You do not have to do this with me. And in fact, I recommend you not because there's a whole bunch of stuff I haven't explained to you yet, but this is our, this is our subscription on Sepolia right now. It's got a, it's got zero consumers balance of zero. Let's go ahead and let's run this as a script though. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we're gonna say forge script script interactions.s.sol. We're gonna call fund subscription contract, which is gonna call the run, right? Which is gonna use the config, which is gonna get Sepolia and all that stuff. And we're gonna pass this. Oh, actually, before we do any of this, excuse me, we're gonna need a couple of things. So let's copy this before we do any of this, we're gonna do a little clear. 
We're going to have to create a .env again. This is just for testing, so it's okay. .env, we're going to create our Sepolia RPC URL equals, you could copy paste this from your last project. I'm going to sign into Alchemy here, grab a key from here, we're going to do private key equals. I'm going to grab mine from my MetaMask here. Again, because this is just a dummy account and I do not care. Account details, export private key, confirm, copy this. Again, we're not going to really do this with real money, so it's fine. We're going to do source.env. Okay. Now we're going to run forge script script interactions.s.sol fund subscription dash dash. RPC URL is going to be dollar sign Sepolia RPC URL dash dash private key. It's going to be private key dash dash broadcast like that. And let's give this a whirl. And if we did this right, which we didn't, oh, invalid subscription, duh. So it's good. It's good that we got an error back, right? But it's better if we test before we do this. So I'm going to grab my subscription ID. And this is why you test on a fork, right? Uh, we're going to update this here. Boom, for Sepolia. I'm going to hit clear. Now we're going to run this. Looks like it's actually working now. But yeah, I mean, exactly what you just saw is why we do all these tests and stuff and don't just yellow it like what I'm doing here. So again, don't run this. Don't do this. Just watch, just showing the power, giving you guys a chance to take a breather. I know we've been coding a lot, but we successfully ran it. If we go to our MetaMask now, go to assets. Once this transaction goes through, we'll see our MetaMask balance actually deplete, which we do indeed. We see it went down by three. And if we refresh the front end, we see we now have a balance of three. Wow, our script is working. Hooray!